Well, joining us now, a very special guest, Air Chief Marshal Anil uh, Yashwan Tipnis joins us now. Thank you, sir, very much for, for speaking to us. Is Air Marshal Tiagi the scapegoat in the middle of the battle between the Congress and the BJP? Thank you for having me on your channel, Vishnu. Let me make it clear, first of all, I'm not here to defend Air Chief Marshal Tiagi, certainly not. But I certainly feel that his arrest, why what is necessary, is very important for the CBI to explain. Now, whether he is being a scapegoat or not, it is for the investigation to establish, not for me. But I will tell you the process in which any acquisition is made by the Air Force and the MOD together. Now, all of us know that in this particular instance, in that is the acquisition of the VVIP helicopters, certain specifications had been set for meeting the VVIP helicopter uh, conditions in which our political leadership would make use of this helicopter. Now, at some stage, these specifications were made to change. And it is alleged, apparently, according to the reports that I have uh, heard in the media, that they were done at the instance of Air Chief Marshal Tiagi. Now, to me, who has been at the helm of affairs and who has seen these uh, cases, you know, being uh, put through the Ministry of Defence, it is absolutely absurd. No chief and the service uh, or no service headquarters can change any specifications unilaterally. In this particular instance, in any case, the need for change of specifications has not been uh, prima facie initiated by air headquarters, but by the National Security Advisor through the Ministry of Defense. So, um, Air Chief Marshal, let me ask and you And the reason this. given was... Yes. Sir, uh, Certainly. we've got lots of time, so let's, let me ask you this, sir. While you say that it wasn't possible for any air chief to, to change the, the requirements in this particular deal, the Italian court documents have... Uh, unilaterally, clear, unilaterally. Right, unilaterally I'm correct. The, the Italian court documents have clear and repeated mention of Air Chief Marshal Tiagi. There is correspondence between the middlemen where he is named as well. Uh, isn't that an evidence or an indicator of possible guilt? Uh, Vishnu, there are two distinct, uh, you know, parts to this case. One is the money taking and one is the uh, manipulation, or not manipulation, but the change of specifications as laid down initially. Now, as far as money taking is concerned, I don't know. If there is any money being taken, then certainly you establish it. After all, the people and the investigation that has been done and the conclusion that have been drawn is not by an Indian agency, but a foreign agency. Certainly, that is very strong grounds on which the CBI must proceed. But if they have got this money-taking charge, certainly put this uh, gentleman in the dock. So they are doing that, sir? But as for the specification... They are interrogating yeah, Yes, but as for the specification... I beg your pardon? So that's why they, that's why he's yes, being interrogating you. Yes, they're interrogating you. Certainly, sir, you, but, you're arguing, but uh, Vishnu... I, sir, Vishnu. I take your point. I, I completely accept the point that you're trying but to make, you know, that unilaterally one person cannot change the specifications. There is an entire process. It involves multiple individuals and multiple agencies. But, that sir, that I, I actually that have a document over here. It's from the Italian court. Right. And it mentions over here in the right. handwriting of, of one of the middlemen that six million euros was actually supposed to have been paid to the Indian Air Force. There is the Air Force Chief, there is the Deputy Chief, there is the DG Maintenance and some other individuals as well. This is the handwriting of, a, of one of the middlemen in this particular deal. So is it enough for us to just stick to can the Air Force Chief unilaterally change qualitative requirements? Shouldn't we actually be looking at volumes of evidence which seem to exist against Air Chief Marshal Tiagi? But of course, but of course you must do that. The Air Force would want it. All veterans would want it. Certainly I want it. If there is even a slightest suspicion of mis misdoing by the former Air Chief, it must be investigated. 
So that is a separate issue altogether. Where did he get that money? How did he get that money? He has to explain. So, and if he is not able to explain, then take action against him. But then why are you... Now, why, as far as the... Why are you defending him then, sir, at this stage, just on this I one ground? I am not defending him. Because I am quite... No, I am... Sir, sir, young Vishnu, I am not defending him. I am questioning the need to arrest a personality like him. Okay. He has not interfered, uh, you know, with the... Uh, proceedings of the CBI for the last four years. He has cooperated fully. He has, in, if at all, he was able to interfere with this investigation, he would have done it earlier. Now, if the arrest is, you know, to uh, press charges against him, then press those charges. What is the investigation that is continuing? And what was the need for arrest? That is all my question on this. So, sir, let me ask as you As far this. as the other thing is concerned, so, uh, but let me just please continue yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he, in a, a, now if he is, you're implicating other people, you know, from the Air Force, how that they have not been arrested, they have not been questioned. Mm -hmm. I want to know what is happening there. Secondly, they are, you know, they are being questioned now, is, sir. So, a, a matter of fact. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah. Not just in the Air Force, but several of the bureaucrats okay. are being questioned by the CBI. Uh, including uh, uh, former uh, defense secretaries and the like, they are also going to be questioned. So it's not just him being targeted per se. I mean, that's one line of argument. No, no, perfect. Then, then I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. I'm really happy to so, hear sir, that. But I must because ask you this. any wrongdoing... I must, I, yeah. I'm, I, I must ask you this, sir. Isn't it strange that a yes. serving Air Force chief yes. would meet representatives of a company trying to push through a deal to win a 3006 crore contract when he is a serving Air Force chief. There are dates which are mentioned in this, sir. See, if, you know, what you have to say is that has he met them socially? Has he met them specifically? Has he met them in the open? You know, we meet people of all sorts all the time. Sir, now, if there is a 3600 like crore rupee deal being negotiated, would you as an Air Force chief have met uh, met representatives of this company c along with your cousin brothers who are also a part of that company in trying to push that deal through. Is it an, is it, is it an exclusive uh, meeting? Sir, is it, it an exclusive meeting? Yes, sir, it was an exclusive that meeting. That between the, these three uh, eight, it was you know, the a, company it was, representatives? No, sir, it was a, it was a meeting. Or is it in a social function? Uh, sir, uh, there were multiple meetings, not just one, sir. There were multiple meetings, including no, the no, cousin, there, sir, and the names of the hotels sir, where they were meeting no. is also mentioned. Go ahead, sir. Vishnu, it, it, certainly such meetings are questionable. I, if you are asking me, no, I would not have done it. Now, the question here is, you know, uh, I don't know how much uh, uh, the air chief was, the former air chief, was aware of the fact that his cousins are actually dealing with this case. And if he was uh, aware of it, then certainly he should have been far more circumspect in allowing himself to be in a meeting along with his cousins with the manufacturers or the dealers, certainly.